So when you resort to this kind of behavior, yelling and and name calling and door slamming, it is crossing the line. Hi, Kingsley here. In this video, we will dive into the important topic of how to talk to your partner without starting a fight. I'll share with you five ways to do so. Now, I know that it can be tough to talk to your partner sometimes, and I'm sure you probably would agree with that, especially when you're feeling angry or frustrated. But, but it's important to remember that fighting doesn't solve anything. <laughs> In fact, what I find, it usually makes things worse. Wouldn't you agree? You can say, well, oh, come on, I don't agree with that. Well, I'll, I'll take you up on that in a few moments. Hang in there. Hold on to that for a second. Now, in this video, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to hopefully convince you. I'm going to hopefully persuade you that with five ways or five techniques that will help you communicate, right? Talk to your partner in a healthy way, a way that prevents, minimizes, or at least minimize fighting, where you can look to having those conversations without the fear of that happening. But before we get there, I want to just pose three questions that I like to ask even here at the beginning. Now, have you ever felt ignored or unheard by your partner? Second question, do you keep things inside to avoid ending up in a fight with your partner? And the third question is, do you lie to your partner simply to avoid confrontation or fighting? Have you done that? Now, some people might object to this idea that you can have conversations and sometimes fierce or hard conversations, and they'll say it's impossible to talk to your partner without ever fighting. But I, I disagree. I disagree. And again, I hopefully can make the case for that. Now, I think it's possible to have disagreements without resorting to name calling, yelling, or arguing. Uh, in fact, I think it's essential for any healthy relationship to learn how to do so. And it's possible. Now, I love that God has given us emotions to feel things. Because if God didn't give you emotion, you wouldn't have felt frustrated or anger or irritation, right? Those are emotions that God has given to us. So they're good emotions, but they're good emotions that can go bad or, or can be used, let's put it this way, used in a way that could be considered bad or unhealthy, right? But God also gives, gives us guidelines as to how to behave regardless, regardless of our feelings. And one of my favorite scriptures is the Bible says in the book of James, be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. Means that permission to be angry, to show your emotions, but don't cross the line. Sin not means when you have to resort to name calling and yelling and slamming the door and all those different things, you've crossed the line and God calls that sin. Now, you might say, Kings, but it's easy for you to say. <laughs> you don't know what it is to live with my partner. And you do have a point. But I, I don't need to know what it is to live with your partner because I think what I'm still saying is true. It's true if you're willing to apply because everything we do is a choice. We make choices and sometimes we want to blame others. We want to deflect from our responsibility because we just don't want to do the work. We don't want to moderate or regulate our emotions. We want to put that on someone else. Now, I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of couples over the last several years, both as a licensed marriage and family therapist and as a certified relationship coach. And I can tell you, I've heard the stories. You name it. And I think I can say to you, I've heard that. And I'm not just making that up. It's true. I've heard stories after stories after stories. I can believe that I've heard stories like your own as well. And on top of that, I've been married for almost 40 years, four decades, almost four decades, knocking on the door of that. I have learned a thing or two about longevity and about marriage. As you can imagine, 40 years of that almost, we have had all kinds of experiences in our relationship. And I can tell you with, that, with absolute certainty and with and not boasting, but humbly saying this to you with God's help, my wife and I have had our differences, but we have never done the name calling piece. We have never yelled at each other. And I could go on, but it's not about me, as you can tell. This is not about me. It's just, I just wanted to make the point or point that out to you that it's possible. But you might say again to me, Kingsley, you know, going back to the, I, you don't know my partner, you don't know who I live with. And you may say, you know, it's not possible to talk to my partner without fighting. We just have different personalities. And I get it. 
I can tell you almost every marriage I've worked with, I've yet to say I've seen two people who are identical in their personalities. And that's why the saying is opposite attracts, right? You may also say to me, I'm afraid that if I try to talk to my partner about something that's bothering me, they'll get defensive and we'll start fighting. Or you may say, I've tried talking to my partner, to my husband or my wife before, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. <laughs> and I'm not chuckling because I'm laughing at you. I'm just simply saying I can imagine and, but I want to also dispute or debunk that thought that it doesn't make any difference. It does make a difference, but maybe not the difference you want it to make. And that's why these three techniques toward the end will be helpful to you. Three techniques. Okay. Now, while it's true that your partner's behavior can contribute conflicts, so I'm not somehow absolving them, or it's also important to remember that you have control over your own actions and responses. You do. So by adopting the techniques I'll share with you in a few moments, you can create, I believe, an environment that promotes open and respectful communication, which ultimately reduces the likelihood of fights and creating a more harmonious relationship. That's possible, but this is where you come in. You have to take responsibility for that. Now, I would love for you to comment below whether you agree so far or disagree with what I've, I've shared. I'd love to hear from you either way. And, and also while you're at it, leaving a comment, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'm looking for you. I want to hear that button from where I am that you hit it to subscribe and you raised any. I want to encourage you to keep watching because I want to share with you those three techniques that I believe can almost say bulletproof your relationship from fighting and overcome these challenges and build a thriving relationship. Because one of the things as I want to share is the mission of this channel is to eradicate unhappiness from marriages. And this is one of those ways to do that. Now, just in case you're wondering who I am, and if you're new to this channel, I'm wondering that I'm Kings Grant. And I mentioned before, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified relationship coach. Now, I equip married Christian spouses with the necessary tools and resources to take responsibility for their own happiness and create a happier and more fulfilled marriage. And I've shared with you that I've been doing this for a long time, for many, uh, for almost two decades. I'm in, in this field and been married for, as I mentioned before, almost four decades. So uh, I think I have some qualifications <laughs> to talk about a topic like this as well. And let me also recommend while I'm at this, that you listen to my podcast at happiermarriagesecrets.com happiermarriagesecrets.com, where I've talked about a lot of topics there. And you can also listen to and just, you know, binge listen and take me wherever you go in, in the earbuds, in the car, in the walk, in the field, you know, whatever you're doing, let's, let's put, plug it in and listen to Happier Marriage Secrets podcast. And uh, I'd love to for, uh, for you to do that. And I, tru I truly appreciate that as well. Now, let's explore then why I believe it's important. I call them the benefits of, of um wanting to implement those strategies that I'll share with you and why it is that you want to look at what I'm sharing through the lens of which I'm, I'm, I'm giving to you and filtering things this way. Because by learning to talk to your partner without starting a fight, you're going to experience a positive shift shift in your marriage, right? Not only will you enhance the, the connection, that you, a deeper connection and a more experience more of intimacy with your spouse, you also begin to foster understanding. And here is where it comes in for you as well. You're going to build a, a stronger foundation for your marriage. And I believe that's what you want. And that's why you're listening to this channel, even this the, uh, in this moment. Now, there are many benefits to talking to your partner without starting a fight, but I want to share with you three of the most important ones. Number one, it will improve your relationship. Ta-da! <laughs> Who would ever guess that? It will improve your relationship. When you communicate, or talk to your partner in a healthy manner. What that does over time, it builds trust, it builds respect, and it builds intimacy. So that's one of the benefits I believe that will come as a result of you practicing, implementing, and and kind of um listening to what I'm saying and so hopefully be won over. <laughs> okay, overcoming those obstacles that I wish, wish I mean objections we shared earlier. Number two benefit is it will help you. It will help you resolve conflict. 
rather than having unresolved conflict, so many couples I've talked to and worked with have, I call them unfinished business. Maybe you're having unfinished business because of this very thing. You can't talk to your partner about issues without starting a fight. And so you end up with all this unfinished business, unresolved conflict since I've shared earlier. Want to. And the third benefit is it will make you happier. How about that? When you're not constantly fighting with your partner, what's going to happen? You're going to have more energy. You're going to focus on your health, yourself, your spouse, and it allows you to enjoy your marriage, right? Less tossing and turning at night and being up because of anxiety and depression. This will help you to do that no matter what situation you may have gone through. Let me share with you uh, the, our story of our, our couple. I and mean, if you've been listening and to a past, you heard me mention this couple, Sarah and John. Now, Sarah and John are fictitious couple. There's no one that I'm having in mind when I make this story up. It's just to help to facilitate and underscore this topic at hand. Now, Sarah and John have been married for 13 years, and they have two young children. Sarah works primarily from home and have primary care responsibility for the children. And John works full-time outside the home, okay? Now, John has been working long hours lately at his job. He's been stressed out and tired, and he hasn't been spending as much time with Sarah, his wife, and the kids. Sarah is starting to feel resentful. She feels like she's doing all the work at home, and she doesn't feel like John is pulling his weight. Now, one night John came home and from work and it was late. He was feeling exhausted. He doesn't want to talk. A rough day. And Sarah is feeling frustrated and angry. And she starts to complain about to John about how he never helps out. I heard that word. He never helps out around the house. And when that word is used, never, always, it creates defensiveness. So guess what? John gets defensive and they start to argue. Now, I'm going to leave the story right there because I think that you get the picture. Now, now that I've shared a story with you about John, Sarah and John, I want to dive into the three practical ways that you can implement these strategies bulletproof to minimize, to reduce, to eliminate these fights in your marriage. Now, these strategies are rooted in biblical teachings, even though I may not mention something from the Bible specifically, and I may or may not as I go on, but what it is, principles I take from the scriptures as well as my clinical background. So it's clinical and biblical together. So we, we intersect those together in this, um, this channel. And so what, when I do that, it helps to um, you to communicate with your partner in an effective manner, because I'm using, again, principles from both um, the clinical and biblical, and it's going to help you to build a stronger bond. So how can you implement what I call bulletproof techniques to keep most, if not every conversation from ending in a fight? How do you do that? Now, before I give you those practical ways, let me encourage you to at least gauge how your fightings or the differences you've been having in your marriage have or is impacting your marriage. Maybe there's erosion taking place and you really don't know. You can feel it. There's something off, but you're not sure what it is. And suppose you could find out what that is. Suppose you could have a better idea to gauge the state of your marriage. Well, my friend, there is a way to find out. And what I've done is created a simple marriage assessment quiz that you can take in less than 90 seconds that will give you a general idea of the state of your marriage. Um, you can access that at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz, happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz. And you'll get a downloadable PDF uh, that explains your results and give you a next step suggestion. So you want to take that at happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz. And the link will be in the description that follow this video in case you missed it. So how do you then do um, uh, implement bulletproof techniques that will allow you to talk to your partner, your husband, your wife, without starting a fight? Now, here are the three things I want to suggest. And the first one is learn how to listen. Learn how to listen. Second, I know how to listen. I don't, I almost, give me the second one. Maybe you need to learn to listen. And that's why you're jumping to say, ah, oh, you shut me down or shutting me out. Because most times you ask a husband or a wife, 
if they're a good listener. And they'll say, yeah, of course, I'm a good listener. But what they're simply saying, I hear you. Because that spouse of that person will say, oh, no, he is not. Oh, no, she is not. I was multitasking on their phones, doing something. That's not listening. That is not devoting yourself to truly listening. Listening requires you all in, right? Non-verbally and verbally. When you're distracted doing other things, you're not listening. You're, you're hearing. I don't care what you say. You're not truly listening because your brain cannot do two things at the same time. So all multitasking, come on. You're not. You're missing something. So when your partner is talking, you want to really listen to what they're saying. Just don't wait your turn to talk. Many couples do, or many spouses do. They're waiting their turn to talk. And I think it's disrespectful. It's saying to your partner, what you're saying is not that important. Well, my friend, listen, the reason why they're saying it is because it's important to them and you need to treat it that way. So learn how to listen. Actively listening, reflective listening is required, right? And I've talked more about that in the past. And so you can go back and listen to some of my videos, but I've engaged this topic before. Second strategy is to express your feelings in a healthy way. So many couples I've worked with, they will say, oh, I tell them my feelings and I listen and I ask a question. So tell me what it is when you're expressing your feelings to your spouse, how does that sound? Give me an idea of what that's like. And they'll tell me, oh, you know, I'll say to her or to him, I feel that you're not listening to me, or I feel like you're not hearing me. I, I feel like you don't care about what I have to say. And they say, oh, see, that's how I tell them my feelings. My friend, that is not a feeling statement. That is an opinion. That is a thought. You're sharing your opinion about what it is you've experienced, and you're telling your partner about what it is. You didn't, you didn't tell him your, about your feelings. So, oh, I, yes, I did, Kingsley. Didn't you hear me, use, hear me use the word feelings? Oh, I heard you all right. So not because you say, I feel, means you're talking about your feelings. And I don't want to get too deep into that, but that's not about your feelings. It's an opinion you're sharing. And most times, opinions are debatable because who says that that person is not going to debate you? And that's why I say many times, Couples who are talking about their feelings, but not really doing that, they get in these arguments because they're not truly sharing their feelings. A rule of thumb, and I'm going to say this one piece and move on, feelings normally three or four words, you share your feelings. Beyond that, it's an opinion. It's a rule of thumb. So I feel sad. I feel very sad. That's a feeling. You can empathize with that. I feel like you're not listening to me is not a feeling. You don't empathize with that. You argue with that. And that's what many couples do. So if you're feeling angry or frustrated, don't bottle it up, but effectively tell your partner how you're feeling. And hopefully you have a, a better way of expressing that with your partner, but do it in a respectful manner. Do it in a respectful manner, right? So express your feelings in a healthy way. And number three, be willing to compromise. Be willing to compromise. No one is always going to get their way, right? You're not going to get all that you want, nor is your spouse. So be willing to compromise or negotiate with your partner so that you can both be happy. It's very important that you're thinking about the other person. And the Bible speaks about it this way. Speak the truth in love. So you're telling your partner about your feelings. That's the truth. But do it in a loving manner, right? Use I statements. It's like, you just made, you made me so mad. You made me so upset. That you statement is fighting because you're now invite him or her to be, get into a fight with you because you're blaming. That's a blaming statement. It's very hard to compromise when you're beginning to blame right out of the box by saying, you just don't listen. You don't hear me. That is not how you compromise. Okay. You're not going to get there. You want to use I statements. You know, I was thinking, I was, I had this thought right? That I statements, I statements are so important and it allows you to, to compromise. And that's why the Bible says, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath. Meaning that when you're talking about this to common ground, you want to be able to use your emotions, but use it in a manner that gets you where you want to get by using I statements and always be thinking, how can I truly speak in a manner that would be reflective of a God-like manner, a Christ-like manner, because that's at the, at the end of the day, my friend, that's what you want to do, right? And again, you can read the scriptures that talks about, because Jesus gave a sermon on the Mount, right? That talks about a lot of things about communication. How do you talk to people? Even when you're upset with them, what you should do, he talks about that there as well, right? So these strategies will empower you to create, I believe, a nurturing and peaceful 
environment in your marriage, make you happier, have a happier marriage. But if you notice what I've said, these are your responsibilities. I've placed this on you because you are the one who needs to do these things and not wait for your spouse to do them. You're only responsible for yourself. And I, I share this with my clients so often. These two things are responsible for, number one, for what, how you behave. And number two, your response to the behavior of your spouse. That's all. So you focus on that. Keep your eyes on that. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, as the Bible says, and leave the rest to God. Do your part and see what difference that will make. Now, so in this video, I've shared with you these three practical ways, strategies, bulletproof strategies that will help you to talk to your partner without starting a fight. Now, these strategies or tips, as you can hear, they're built on not just things I'm making up in my head, but they're clinically tested, they're biblically tested and talked about, and they can help you to improve your communication and strengthen your relationship. So by focusing on your own behavior and understanding the benefits I shared earlier, implementing these practical techniques, you can transform the way you talk to your partner and transform your marriage. Remember, it takes effort and practice, but the results are well worth it. So embrace the opportunity to strengthen your relationship and create a happier and more fulfilling marriage. Now, if you're, again, struggling to communicate with your partner, I encourage you to try these, these tips and experiment with them. Um, they may not work overnight, of course, but they will help you make progress. Remember, it's progress, not perfection. Take it one day at a time. Practice become permanent and the better you get at it. And that's what you want to be able to do. Now, before you go, make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button and click on the notification bell. And remember to listen to the Happier Marriage Secrets podcast by going to happiermarriagesecrets.com. And the links will be that I mentioned today will be in the description below. Again, I'm Kingsley Grant, and I focus on what keeps you up at night, worrying about what to do about your marriage and help you to no longer do that. With that said, let's go and make marriages happier again. And until next time, peace out. God bless you. And I'll see you on the next broadcast on this channel. Please share this with one other person. And I will truly appreciate that. God bless. And I'll see you then.